This video has been brought to you by HelloFresh. Fall season is upon us for however long it lasts anyway. And if you don't got time to stand at a checkout line at a grocery store, HelloFresh is here to help you make some homemade, wholesome meals lickety split. Take your pick from 40 chef crafted recipes every week covering family friendly and fit and wholesome options. There's something for everyone here. And there's more than just dinners too. You can also choose from over 100 items to round out your order like snacks and easy to prepare lunches so you could take some good eats with you on the go and waste little time. Everything's delivered directly to your doorstep in a single box package and portion just right so that nothing goes to waste. And it don't even matter if you're a good cook or not, HelloFresh orders come complete with easy to follow instructions and you can be certain their ingredients are delivered farm fresh ensuring the best quality. As someone who's been using them for some time, trust me when I say you'll be making some great quality meals in no time at all and it saves a bunch on ordering out all the time believe me. And that's perfect for someone like me who works from home. I get caught up in a lot of video editing and streaming and I simply don't have the time to go out and get what I need to make dinner. But with HelloFresh, with all the goods coming to me, that's convenience you can't beat. So go to HelloFresh.com and use code 50SCMJ at checkout for 50% off plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com code 50SCMJ at checkout for 50% off plus free shipping. Thanks for helping support this channel as always and whatever you decide to make, I hope you enjoy yourself. Let's continue on with the show. This coconut curry is genuinely great. I'm done with another marathon and I'm gonna be taking it a little easy today because I got some catching up to do. Hot oh, damn, it feels like every other week something comes out and I got no time to play it for myself. I'm surprised I was even able to get a video on Resident Evil 4 Remake out at all, but there's also Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, Final Fantasy 16. I got Super Mario Wonder coming out in the next few months on top of Sonic Superstars, the final bit of Sonic Frontiers DLC, so you know that's getting around too. All this on top of everything else I wanted to do for the remainder of the year. It's a lot to process. But one step at a time, I said I was gonna take it a little easy today. So a few months ago, right as I was moving back to the Northeast, someone killed Sonic the Hedgehog again. And this time there wasn't an emotionally conflicted princess there to give him a sloppy jalopy to wake his ass up. No, so some dedicated Sonic fans alongside Katie Krasanowski, the head of Sonic's social media account, executive producer of this game, and absolute sweetheart of a human being. Hey Katie, if you happen to be watching, thanks for uh, helping me pronounce your last name again. They decided for April Fool's Day, they were going to release a whole ass visual novel game for free on Steam. The murder of Sonic the Hedgehog. I mean, don't we already kill this motherfucker at least once a year anyway? Still, huh, okay, but hey, it's free, so that automatically gives it the harmless grade, but I'm going to give it a look-see anyway and see what I've been missing out on. I think, uh, unless I'm mistaken, uh, this will be my first review on a visual novel game. So if I can get this to work, then maybe I can finally pull the trigger on some other series that I've been getting a lot of requests of throughout the years, like Ace Attorney or Danganronpa. You see, outside of Ace Attorney, I don't really fancy myself as a visual novel connoisseur. Let's put it this way, I don't go out of my way to look for any. Most if not all of my history with these kind of games come from recommendations from friends. To mention again, Ace Attorney, Danganronpa got a bunch of indie stuff like Doki Doki Literature Club, How to Full Boyfriend, the one where you know you date pigeons. It's actually a lot more layered than it sounds. Don't judge a book by its cover sort of deals. I got killed by ninja hawks in that game because I couldn't get laid. As you can see, while she was meant to act as a goodwill ambassador, she fails to display sufficient intimacy with the birds. Yo le hee hoo Huh? I think I just heard something. Ow! Oh, oh someone just judo chopped me in the neck! Ninjas? Ninjas! Eek! <laughs> ah, 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 ninjas, yes. <laughs> what the hell? Ace Attorney is the most standout example for me. I became a fan of that whole franchise after my friend Ted gifted me the first game and I haven't looked back since. I wouldn't mind doing reviews on these types of games, but I've always had a degree of hesitancy because what are visual novels if not just a bunch of shifting PNGs and a shitload of text. It's engaging enough for the player, but when making a video about it, it's kind of static, and I wonder if it's even worth trying to make something out of it while keeping things visually stimulating for the viewer. Well, we're gonna find out today, and uh, since this is a visual novel, the entire point is the story, so I'm gonna put a spoiler warning on this one. 
Not gonna put a timestamp, I'm just gonna talk about the whole thing all willy-nilly. So if you're at all curious, stop watching this video, go play it for yourself, it doesn't cost you anything. And then if you wanna hear a mid-30 Sonic fan talk about it for a bit, you can come back when you're good to go. But anyway, let's talk about the murder of Sonic the Hedgehog. Honestly, even as a joke, I'm a little surprised they even humored the idea since the last time Sonic bit the dust was in the game that almost killed the whole fucking franchise. The murder of Sonic the Hedgehog can easily be construed as an insulting nickname for Sonic 06. But you know, the state of Sonic the Hedgehog got, especially on social media, has been nothing but good vibes and memes for over the past decade and a half, I want to say. And we can argue the total effectiveness of this approach all day, but I don't think it's crazy to say that it brought the community together stronger than ever before. So to show their thanks to that community, and just to show their love and dedication to the blue blur, this team made a visual novel where Sonic and the gang get into some goofy shit. I'm going to break it down chapter by chapter. I feel my summary will be better constructed that way. Our story is told through the eyes of this dude here that you're free to name whatever you please. I read that the canon name is supposedly Barry, but I called him Johnny, you know, name him after this guy. And John here is just starting their new job as a train attendant for the Mirage Express, a locomotive that for over 32 years has been taking passengers where they please under the watch of the conductor who plans on retiring and going on vacation soon with his hot milf wife. Equipped with the latest cutting edge technology, including a casino with a rigged slot machine, the Mirage Express promises only the most luxurious ride passengers will ever experience. And along for today's ride is Sonic and company who are taking a trip on the Mirage Express in celebration of Amy Rose's birthday, and I gotta say, she looks great for 38. But it's not just a fancy train ride they're taking, they're also getting ready to play a murder mystery game, with Sonic and the others even taking on different roles for the occasion. Sonic a captain, tells a detective, Knuckles a cowboy, quickly drops the act while playing isn't for everyone, I get it. Amy's a journalist, Spectre a butcher, Espio a poet, Blaze, oh shit, Blaze is here! Put her in more fucking games! Rouge, uh, I actually don't remember what role she had, I just put down Thief in my notes because, well, she wants to steal something, but you know, that's not role playing, that's just who she is. Lazy ass, at least Knuckles attempted an accent. And finally, someone somehow managed to wrangle Shadow into this, playing the role of, well, Shadow with a green hat, let's be real. The game is simple, someone's gonna die, and it's up to the player to figure out who's the culprit based on clues and information gathered from the others. And our game begins after the train suddenly speeds up and throws everyone for a loop. Amy, Tails, and John awaken to find themselves in the closet, but not for long as Amy clears a path with her hammer. But to their horror upon getting back to the dining car, they see the slumped corpse of Sonic. The game is afoot. With the victim in place, it's now up to Amy, Tails, and John to work together to find out which among the others is the murderer. But as Tails and Amy head out to the next car in haste, John notices that something's off. While trying to compliment Sonic for imitating a corpse perfectly, shut up John, they notice that Sonic seems genuinely injured. But because they can't tell if Sonic's just deeply committed to the bit, they put it aside for the time and catch up to Tails and Amy. Our first suspect is Knuckles, located in the saloon car. Turns out he's got a rock solid alibi, but he's a total fucking sore loser. Destroyed a super monkey ball arcade machine because he lost the vector's high score by one point. Also, it turns out Shadow plays super monkey ball? What the fuck? I always uh, figured he was more of a time crisis guy. House of the Dead to keep it on brand. I want to go ahead and say now that I was not disappointed by the number of things I can click on in the background and get some laughs out of. You know my eye was immediately glued to that Omachow want it poster, and then I read it this dude's on the run for medical malpractice. Like, what the fuck did they do? Like, I don't care if that's just a gag, I hope the next game really follows up on that. I want to see that trial televised. But with Knuckles scratched off the list, our next destination is uh, at the library. Holy shit, do, uh, do luxury trains actually have libraries in them? <laughs> I wouldn't, wouldn't be in there if the train suddenly screeched to a halt, you know? And what's this? Hang in there. Mm. Copyright 1998. Mm, determined or not, that child must be long dead. We find Vector and Espio here, and while Vector can explain his whereabouts playing arcade games with Knuckles and Shadow and all that, Espio isn't as lucky, and he really has to stumble his way through his alibi, explaining the tales that he can't possibly be the murderer because he was just too caught up in reading a train manual. I mean, I can't say I blame them, but this shit's like a whole other language. You know, for several years, I've had a fan donate to me a whole bunch of, like, train-related stuff, simulation, models, all that other shit, and I'm gonna make good on that video at some point or another, but I don't know where the fuck to even begin with this kind of shit. But a shaky alibi isn't enough to fully blame Espio, and there's still reason enough to interrogate the others. So in the meantime, the trio head towards the casino car where Rouge and Blaze are stationed at. This chapter really doesn't move the plot forward, but it still ended up being one of my favorites because of all the great character moments we get as we help Rouge and Blaze hatch a plan to steal a Fabergé egg from a highly secured vault. 
and that comes complete with crude drawing plans and shitload of dialogue options to choose from as the gang panics when they think the egg is actually a ticking time bomb. It's good stuff. I love how when you're considering distracting the guard by pretending to be Blaze's spouse, she requires that if you plan on marrying her, you gotta tell her about previous war crimes before they make it official. And I'm more than sure that's Blaze not even doing a bit. I'd absolutely believe she would fucking run a background check on you before becoming a couple. You can click on these LED banners in every car to change the picture. Nice little visual gag. Check out the one in the casino. I don't know why, but my mind didn't process these numbers as a ring payout, but a secret phone number. Are you or someone in your household 65 years of age or older? Press 1 for yes. If you or someone in your household is 65 years of age or older, otherwise, press pound. Again, press 1 now. I don't know why I thought that. I think what it is that sometimes when I'm solving a mystery, I tend to overthink. You know, everything and anything could be a clue. I thought, hey, maybe this might lead to some clue, an Easter egg at least. No. But with Rouge and Blaze off the list of suspects, that just leaves us with the lounge car, where Shadow resides. Oof, somebody better tell Knuckles that they made the Master Emerald into a fucking chandelier. You hate to see it. It turns out Shadow's trying to hide something, but it's not what we think it is. The only secret he's trying to keep is that he was planning on getting Amy some concert tickets for her birthday. Well, that's just adorable. Good guy Shadow not only plays Super Monkey Ball, but also looks out for his friends. Just don't ask where the money came from. But because during our investigation, we learn of a secret passage that links the lounge to the library where Vector and Espio were hanging, this gives the gang additional reason to doubt Espio's alibi. And sure enough, with enough pressing, all signs point to Espio for committing the deed, putting Sonic to sleep with a poisonous blow dart. But then Sonic suddenly slumps into the scene alive and well-ish, claiming that the train itself is a badnik and is actually pretty dangerous. No more time for mysteries, it's time to stop another one of Eggman's schemes, for the train is set up to take our heroes to Eggman's headquarters, where Eggman promises to, uh, well, I don't know, I guess lock them up? He's just as caught off guard as everyone else is, but he isn't one to look a gift horse in the mouth and welcomes the train back anyway. So it turns out the train itself is doing this not just to follow Eggman's orders, but it believes that by doing this, it'll get a reward, in this case, preventing the conductor from retiring so that he can stay with the train. Yeah, so the train ended up befriending the conductor throughout his years of service, but when it learns that the conductor plans on retiring and going his separate ways, the train can't accept this and concocts a plan to capture Sonic and friends, give them to Eggman, and then hope the doctor gives it what it wants. It's a surprisingly emotional twist, the robot train developed feelings, but it can't process or deal with the idea of losing something, so it, it goes nuts. Not the left turn I was expecting, but uh, if the plan was to capture Sonic for Eggman, why not go the extra mile and make sure Sonic is locked up and secured? It instructs Espio to put Sonic to sleep with the blow dart, pretending it's all part of the game and all that, but then it just leaves Sonic alone, letting the dude fully recover, and because of that, Sonic and the gang goes all Sonic heroes and stops the train in its place, rescuing the little Flicky inside and putting an end to the mystery game. Wait, hold on a second, was this Flicky inside this train for over 32 fucking years? Oof, that therapy bill is gonna be insane. But with the danger past, Sonic friends and John celebrate Amy's birthday properly, complete with cake, and the day is saved, with the disgruntled Eggman taking an angry bubble bath after processing this literal emotional train wreck. Gotta say, seeing Metal Sonic and Sage in those t-shirts is probably the best thing about the story. But that's the murder of Sonic the Hedgehog, and if one word comes to mind to summarize it all for me, it's cute. Sonic the Hedgehog or not, you know, I was heading into a free visual novel game release partially as an April Fool's gag, so my expectations were a flat line. But you know what? That only made me pleasantly surprised by how much I ended up liking it. Let's get this out of the way first, though. This is a brain dead as shit game. <laughs> You're, pardon the pun, railroaded through the whole thing. You can only make the right choices. The game never stops holding your hand, even at the very end when you're trying to name the true culprit. Choosing something wrong in casual dialogue when you're interrogating someone or dying in a minigame has no penalty. So if you want my advice, feel free to pick all the wrong options because the only thing you lose is some extra dialogue that could be pretty funny. After you collect enough clues and it's time to interrogate the next suspect, you play this short minigame where you guide Sonic through this, uh, what's basically a special stage, collecting a certain number of rings before reaching the checkpoint. It's not exactly a half pipe, I'm reminded more of the slope minigame from Sonic Labyrinth than the special stage from Sonic 3D Blast. And mentioning both of those games in the same sentence has given me some serious psychic whiplash. It's great music and it's great sprite work, but even these are pretty mindless. Until the last few near the end, and then it suddenly gets pretty challenging. Ended up beating shit a couple of times because I couldn't be as precise as I wanted to with mouse and keyboard controls. 
Unfortunately, this is the only mini game the story offers, so I think the magic vanishes in no time. I personally think there should have been, like, say, a unique mini game for each chapter to fit the character you're interrogating. When we're trying to distract Knuckles as Tails fixes the arcade machine, like, I thought we were gonna have, like, a punch out game. Look at Knuckles here, he's putting up his dukes. I'm about to give us the good old one, too. But no, it's just more of the Sonic minigame. Also, I would never put my name directly on a console with a Sharpie marker. You're ruining the resale value, John. Stick with adhesives, they're easy to peel off. And I know, it's like, John, this was made in good faith. A wink and nod to fans of all ages, and I don't deny that. However, if, say, they were to make another one of these in the future, maybe make it a fully-fledged visual novel game that they want to sell, I think uh, adding more things to do, more minigames and such, would make the adventure a little more fulfilling. As is, the murder of Sonic the Hedgehog, despite the grim title, is a cozy joyride that just wants to make you laugh and feel, and I genuinely think they did a great job with that part. I loved everyone in this. It felt like I was reading something out of the IDW comics with the humorous writing and colorful artwork that gracefully highlights elements of these guys that folks love. Of course Knuckles broke the arcade machine in anger. Of course Rouge doesn't actually give a shit about the mystery game and just wants to steal treasure. Of course Blaze asks if you violated the Geneva Convention lately. Espio being a poet with painfully forced rhymes was a highlight for me too. I thought Vector could have been given more to do. He's a butcher in the story with no kitchen, so what the hell is he supposed to do here? And they went and made Tails the detective for this, so he can't even flex his chops properly. Well, now that I think about it, if Vector were the detective, this game would be over before it started. Dude has godlike intuition. The player character is a total down-on-their-luck dork making for a good audience surrogate that experiences the world of Sonic the Hedgehog and all the batshit insane things that come with it. They remind me of all the things I love about characters like Phoenix Wright, and I wouldn't be surprised if that was intentional since it's clear this game uses Ace Attorney as an inspiration. The straight-laced attitude, the pathetic attempts of trying to be funny or clever, and having a borderline unhealthy fascination with checking trash cans. It's just like me for real. I forgot that was there. Shadow and Sonic ended up being some of my favorites. Shadow trying to hide the fact that he's trying to surprise Amy with concert tickets is just the most wholesome shit. Hard to believe nearly 20 years ago this is the same dude that was killing aliens with firearms. Sonic doesn't get much, given the circumstances, but when he comes back in the picture it's everything I love about the guy. The cool attitude, the confidence, his never say never ideology, and he's got a bitching hat now. Everything about the moment when your character starts doubting themselves towards the end when things look bleak and Sonic does his Sonic thing and offers the players some comforting words to get them out of their slump is just peak Sonic the Hedgehog. It's overly schmaltzy, but who cares? It makes for something that I'm sure the younger crowd will find endearing, and I liked it because it also came with a variation of Sonic's It Doesn't Matter theme from SA2. For a visual novel, this isn't very long, you can finish this in about two hours, and again, it ain't asking for much if anything, but I got enjoyment enough just being a participant. Honestly, I think the worst thing about this was playing it on PC. If I'm experiencing visual novels, it's gotta be on a handheld, laying on a couch, or lying in my bed, I just feel more comfortable that way. And trying to play this on my Steam Deck didn't help much because the game has no controller support, so I had to use the mouse pad or use the touchscreen a bunch and get my oily ass fingerprints on the screen. But still, it was fun trying to piece together who the Cobra could have been before things were laid bare. And I can say, I got pretty close to finding the actual identity of the bad guy before it was officially revealed. I wasn't expecting the whole train to be the culprit. Puts a new spin on the name Mirage Express, huh? But the train's robotic, like, servant hands being in every car you visit was just too suspicious for me. And I mean, you know none of Sonic's friends would actually hurt the guy. Maybe Shadow, but you know. That's his emotional baggage to unpack. Your shoddy craftsmanship brings shame on all hedgehog kind, and for that, you shall perish. Well, this has been a fun little distraction. I'm glad I was finally able to talk about this game at all because uh, I was struggling for a bit thinking, uh, how am I going to talk about this video? Do I make a versus video on it? Do I bring back Spotlight? And to play it in a very nonchalant way. And it's like, no, it's it's Sonic, dude. You gotta make a versus video on it. That's what a lot of folks found your channel for. So, yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed your time here. And regarding Spotlight, though, uh, just a while ago, I asked my patrons to start giving me suggestions for the return of the Spotlight series. So, uh, sooner rather than later, you guys are gonna be seeing more of that in this channel. I gotta give to the channel something to feed, like, between versus videos, you know what I mean? It do be like that sometimes. But anyway, I want to thank you all for your time, your patience, and your contributions to this channel, helping me, you know, keep doing this every single day of my life. I've been, I've, a song and dance I've said millions of times already, I mean, every single time I see it. But anyway, uh, let's continue with more $10 patron shoutouts. Where's my dad's time? All 
All right, continuing on with our $10 patrons. Again, you can find a link to my Patreon on the card up top or in the description below. It's one of those two. All right. uh, EMC Men, Everboy, ET83, is it Tater or is it T-A-R? Uh, TK the Ink Boy, is it, is it Kanu 1997? It's Q-A-N-U. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Woodland Buckle, Timu Kalasto? No, Kali Elasto. Pudunku, uh, Chow Talks? No, Chata Talks. Or is it uh, Chateau Talks? Maybe it's a little more eloquent that way. Mr. Roche, Giovanni Powell, Seamus McAaron, uh, Speedinator, uh, Darren Young, the Little Paladin, F Man, Deku Black, Jeremiah Delig, Zygon, Napod91, Pixel Addy, yeah, Caddy, Damon Montoya, Mac Z 2021, Alex Denty, J Ruff, 08000, Sammy the Bull, uh, Orcus C, Ratchet Bomber, Jonah Hankins, John vs. World, hey, that's mine, uh, actually not anymore. Uh, Sonic Mania 2099, Tyler Wilson, Khaled Al Sumari, Loyal ZX, The Gag Reflex, Harry Plus 2, Bear from the Moon, Wilfred Somers, 21st Century Guy, Chris Fellow, Jow Sound 95, Real Sethry, Jeremy uh, Redinger, uh, is it uh, Ila Tolly or is it Ija Tolly, Lorak, uh, I'm gonna put Rick, David Lee Smith, Mega Beatman, True Blue Reviews, Hedgy the Blue 32, Jack Silverson, Blaze Breed, and Sega 2000, and finally for today. Lauren Gregory. As always, thank you all for tuning in and watching today's video. I will catch you guys in the next video. As always, thank you all for watching. Stay safe out there. Uh, look out for yourselves and each other. Have yourselves a fantastic night and take care.